Christmas to everyone. Have you greeted each other yet since you arrived this morning? Probably not because many of us probably came after the praise and worship already started. So I'll give you this wonderful chance. I know that after the service, many of us will be in a hurry trying to prepare for the concert this evening. Which, by the way, you're all invited. You're all invited to invite other uh, friends of yours as well. Go ahead and turn to the person next to you and give them a wonderful, warm, heartfelt Merry Christmas greeting. Tell them a blessed Christmas to you. Christmas season makes me really, really feel warm and happy, warm inside of me. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He came to make life better for all of us and to make us the best person we could ever become. And uh, wow, well, that, that, that's a wonderful statement, by the way. When you know that there's somebody who makes life better for you or somebody who makes the best out of you or brings out the best in you. Do you know people like that, by the way? Do you know people who just, just brings out the best in you? That's such a beautiful thing that one of, the, one of the lines that people say when asked by somebody they love, and, and somebody asks you, what do you love me? And the person asks, and, and you answer, or the person that you ask answers, it's because you bring out the best in me, or, or you make the best out of me. That's beautiful, that's sweet, right? Uh, however, we could also, if that's, that's, that's the sweetest thing you could probably ever hear, one of the sweetest things or answers you could hear, um, I know that there are also people in our lives who, who try our patience. You know, they, um, they want to make you want to give up. And um, when asked, probably somebody would say to you, probably one of the most shocking things that you could hear somebody tell you is that you bring up the worst in me. You probably have been told that before by your husband, your spouse, your friend, or whatever. But that's a shocking thing to hear. Probably very insulting to hear as well. Or worse than that is when somebody tells you, you bring out the devil out of me. And by the way, there are people in the church who does that to us, right? There are people in our relationships, and let me remind you once again, that in your life, there will be people who will bring out the best in you, and there will be people who will bring out the devil, quote unquote, out of you. So in relation to that, we'll be bringing the next message of this series. But once again, let me just remind you of the things we've already talked about in this each other series we've been having for the past few weeks. And it's probably going to last for a couple of months. The first one we talked about, which I believe, or I hope and I pray, that all of us are actually applying in our daily living already with all the implications, the indications, and all the enumerations and, and the ex expounding we've heard in all these messages. The first one is to love each other. The second one is to live harmoniously with each other. The third one is to encourage and edify or build each other up. And then the next one is do not destroy each other. The fifth of the series we talked about is to serve each other. And then the last one was to forgive each other. Now, how many of you would say that at least you've done all of them? Ooh, okay. So some of you, how many of you would at least say, I'm trying to do all of them? Okay, good. At least we're here. And if some of you have um, actually like um, forgotten um, the, 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 the things that we talked about, I want you to go to the website. I'll be posting them there. So we'll keep on reminding you of the things that we talked about. But today, we'll be going to the next one. And that's uh, message number seven in this Each Other series. And that is bear each other. Or bear with each other, however we prefer it. And again, the thing that I'd like to just mention to you is that bearing each other strengthens, grows, and builds our relationships. Context again is the church, but um, it will, I believe, apply to all other areas of relationships you may have. Friendship, marriage, uh, corporate, whatever it may be, okay, or in school, or education, academics. So just go ahead and, and uh, bear with me as we go along in discussing this bear with each other message this morning. 
key text that we have is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, and then Colossians 3, 13. And you don't need to stand with me. These are only two verses. But you please go ahead and read it along together with each other. Ephesians 4, verse 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Everybody, it's not there. Let me read it to you. Okay. Ephesians 4, 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So you, you see two of the statements there in those two verses, bearing with one another in love, and then Colossians 3.13, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. So the things that we've noticed in all these verses, at least, I'm going to point out, there's a lot of them, but I'm going to point out three major things to you. The first one is bearing with each other, okay, is, um, has something to do with if you've heard of the expression, if you've been asked before, how are you holding up? How are you holding up? That's the meaning of that word in the original rendition of it. How are you holding up? And we answer, I'm okay, I'm doing well. Let me just say, um, I'm, I'm persevering. I'm bearing life. And many times it has to do with situations in life. But bearing with each other has to do with relationships with other people. So when we talk about bearing with each other, it has something to do with bearing with the personality, bearing with the attitude, bearing with the dealings and treatments of each other, of the person to you. Okay, so that is the context of this. So the first one that is a necessary thing for us to bear with each other is mentioned in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Be completely humble. It will take humility for us to bear with each other because we need humility to learn. We need to continually <coughs> learn. There are those people placed in your lives, by the way, for your, by God, by God's design to be Lord I mean, to be teachers over your life, to be your disciples. And it takes humility for you to be able to bear those people. That's why there are office gifts in the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And specifically the pastors and the teachers, the things, one of the things they do is for them to teach you, for them to pastor you. And as a pastor, he needs to guide you, administer things, administer things over your life. Aside from that, not only the office uh, gifts that God has given to the church, all of us as believers in Christ were told and commissioned by God. Well, in fact, one of the greatest indicators I know that a person is not really saved or not really born again or does not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is because of the fact that many of them are living their lives daily without being a discipler. So all of us are called by God to be disciple, and then later on eventually to be a disciple as well. So being a disciple, not talking about obvious gifts of pastors and teachers alone, all of us were called by God to be disciple. That means to say a disciple is a disciplined learner. Meaning to say, if you are a disciplined learner, there's got to be a disciplined teacher that God is going to put over your life. And who is that? Everybody could be a potential teacher over the life of each one of us because all of us were called to be disciples. So in all of us are called to be disciples as well. Okay. Now I know much as we feel better, by the way, when we learn things by ourselves, when nobody's teaching us, Somehow, there will be times and moments in our lives that it will take humility because there will be moments when we will have to learn from other people. And the reason being is because of the fact that we are not always going to change years of learning. Isn't that true? Somehow, sometimes, we've got to be told what to do by other people. Many times, or sometimes at least, we don't have initiative. We are not conscientious about things that happen around us. It may take a third party for us to be encouraged. Some of us sometimes feel like, feel lazy about learning. Or some of us feel complacent about our lives. Some of us feel comfortable living a life in error. Or probably we know the truth. There's the deal, guys. Sometimes we know the truth. Well, in fact, 
I know of some teachers in the church, and even in this church, who could teach well, share well, guide well, advise other people well, but when they're subjected to the certain situation that they're advising people about, then we are not reacting based on the knowledge we've learned. And sorry to say, and sad to say, in our church, and in many churches, we have gotten, some of us, have gotten comfortable in just teaching other people what's needed to be done. But when we are subjected to it, we are not even affected by the things that we do that may not be really what Christians ought to do. That's the reason why somebody ought to come along and tell us the things that we need to do. Are you doing your devotions daily? That we would rather find that out ourselves and discipline ourselves and, and say, I am, and I'm doing my devotions daily. But sometimes we feel com complacent and we feel comfortable not doing the Christian discipline. We're not praying as we ought to. We're not reading our Bibles as we ought to. We're not doing quiet time as we ought to. No, we're not sharing the gospel as we ought to. We're not serving the church as we ought to. We're not loving each other as we ought to. We're not loving God as much as we ought to. And somebody have to come along and tell you, tickle you a little bit, tap you on the shoulder a little bit and say, come on people, come on brother, we can do this thing. But again, some of us hate the fact that we have got to be reminded by people. But we got to. And it takes humility on our part. Pride will say, why are you telling me this? What are you implying? I'm not doing it. Are you more spiritual than I am? Humility on our part takes that. We've got to bear with people who do that to us. Because God will raise up people to tap us a little bit. Or perhaps, quote unquote, to smack us harder. When tap will not work. But it takes humility to be smacked. To be willing to be smacked. You know, honestly speaking, when I told you before, and uh, for offering some of you were not here again, uh, when I said this, when, uh, when I first started working abroad, in one of the places I went to, we went to Indonesia, we went to, to Singapore, um, we went to Japan as well, and every time I go to some place, there's almost a culture shock that happens. And one of the things that was a culture shock to me was when I went to Japan, and I was just speaking with the customer, and then when they were laughing, one of them, one of them actually, while they were laughing, smacked me so hard <laughs> on my back. And I literally just, if I was drinking something, I would have just really um, threw it out because it was so hard. Bam! And I thought he was getting mad at me, and I stood up as if I wanted to like fight. You know, it's like, you want to fight? It was my attitude. And then one of the members, one of the workers there who's been working for a long time in that country told me, you know, no, 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 no. That's how they express their emotion. <laughs> they don't really mean anything bad. When they're just really, really happy, they smack you really hard. Okay. So either you block, you allow it, or you just duck, you know, whatever. But that's something that they do. They smack you. Okay. So you got to bear with those things. Okay, so some people, God may use some people to smack us hard because we need to learn. Okay, we got to continue to learn. And it takes humility to learn. Okay, so you got to bear with people with humility. Again, we want to be, we, we, a lot of times, the reason why I say it takes humility to learn is because a lot of times we'd rather be teaching people rather than people teaching us. Isn't that true? Because somehow the thought, most especially men, although I know that this is a very general attitude with human beings, because the Bible tells us that the main enemy of every one of us, probably more for men, but every one of us is a victim, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Pride of life hits every one of us. And basically what we want to do is, we want to be seen by people as people who are in control of all things. And we, we get it all figured out. So the suggestion that somehow, we don't have it all figured out, that we are losing control of our family, we're losing control of our situation, we're losing control of our spiritual lives. It's not a good suggestion. That's the reason why we don't want to be taught that, okay? We'd rather tell people that, but we don't want people telling us these things. Because the very truth is we're proud people, and as proud people, we are very competitive people. 